I'm Chase. I'm Avon. And I'm Sonia. And today we're dishing with you from the Ocean Air, located at one, located at 1201 F Street Northwest by Metro Center. Just come on by, have some wonderful seafood. And that's like today is all about oyster. We do have oysters, these wonderful oysters that have a little bit of, of um, Parmesan garlic, cheese. Parmesan cheese. And of course, everyone comes from Maryland crab cakes or sea bass or scallops or lobster or anything. But today, we're all about oysters. We are. Mix it we're up. all about oysters Mix because we have Brian Gomes, the director of special programs at the Oyster Recovery Project, with us. Thanks for being on with us, and thanks for educating us about the Oyster Recovery Project. You want to tell us a little bit about what it is? Um, our partnership has been around about 15 years. Um, we bring together groups to kind of preserve the oyster. It's a keystone species in the bay. Um, we have watermen working with government agencies, working with uh, private interest groups, all in an effort to uh, bring the sh uh, oyster back to... But you, you said that it's a partnership. Um, actually, with the Ocean Air, you have a partnership with them, but how do you conserve oysters when people are eating them? That's a good question. Um, yeah. Yes, and we have some here. How does that work? Um, we have over 30 um, establishments, whether they are restaurants, catering companies, um, wholesalers, etc., that donate their shell back to our nonprofit organization. Um, I brought in a little teaching tool prop from downstairs where they collect the shell here at Ocean Air. That's and, convenient. Um, <laughs> So, in the what's going on now in the bay in the wild, um, runoff pollution. You have a layer of silt on the natural occurring oyster reefs um, in the bay and rivers. When the oysters go to spawn, the larvae swim around for a couple weeks, and when they're ready to put their root down and live somewhere for their life on another oyster shell, uh, hopefully, um, in the wild, that silt layer doesn't allow them to attack oh. and slide off and die. Uh -huh. Very low percentage of reproduction. Um, oyster recovery partnership. Um, kind of helps that out with a Head Start program where the shell that we collect from all these restaurants gets clean, dried, and aged for about a year and it would look very much like this shell. And then in a separate facility at the hatchery, they take, um, raise the water temperature of fertile oysters, play some Barry White music. <laughs> and, uh, get, some, get some action going. And then the spawn is on yeah. and all those I like that. <laughs> that is on. on. T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, do so you sell that on your website? We'd like to have some of those. So cool. <laughs> money that way. I, I always have ideas. So how did we, how did we learn that um, this was a problem? Like, how did you know all this would be like, I would know, I have no clue. I would just go to the store and eat oysters. And then and, ch and, toss and, it. And, and toss it. Yeah. So how do we know that there was a problem with um, the oysters not attaching and the silt and everything else? Um, to kind of go historical for a second, over 400 years ago when Captain John Smith came up the bay and the water was crystal clear and they were running aground on oyster reefs everywhere, um, the entire bay could be filtered by the oyster population in just a few days. Wow. Today, that same oyster population, it takes over a year for that process to happen. So that's why the bay is like, well, not polluted almost, but like there's a lot of, there's a lot of That is a large crack in there. Yes, there. Not, not because these guys, an adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. So a bathtub full really? of water can be filtered by one oyster. These, yeah, one adult oyster. But without a partnership like yours, what are we looking at? We're we looking at just like muddy, muddy water. We are. Um, not only do they clean the bay, but they also create awesome habitat for other key species in the bay. So when you have an oyster reef that is flourishing and um, prominent, you will have little bait fish, little mud crabs, they attract It's like habitat for ones. humanity for... It is. You have a nice <laughs> three-dimensional reef and then you have um, the blue crab, which is a, you know, a delicacy as well in this area. And I think the, our crab uh, cakes are made out of blue crab. This is like all the stuff you could have if you have a healthy ecosystem, right? Yeah, so they, they help the ecosystem. Yes. They actually add... They clean the water value. and they create a great habitat for other critters to come over and say, hey, you guys are doing a good thing here. So when you ha you take the, sh the shells and you you age them to perfection, and then what do you do with those oysters? Do you then put them in the wild? Yeah, so or back to okay. that science center at the hatchery, uh, our partners over at uh, Horn Point Lab in Cambridge, Maryland, they um, take the shell, it gets um, clean, dried, and eggs, it'll be like this. Um, they stimulate the spawn, you have all those baby oysters that are fed for about two weeks. All the... Uh, Red, Nutrients. green, blue algae and plankton they can eat and get it fat and happy. And then uh, they'll look and see they're about to stick their foot down and they can look in a microscope and take like a sample setting. And then at that point, setting big metal setting cages of these empty oysters, get the baby spat poured into it, 
they attach and then they get uh, taken out on a work boat into the bays and rivers to go on sanctuaries and reefs. Okay, I have another stupid question I feel like. Um, you So this is just one, right? And I feel like oysters come, I, the difference between clams and oysters, I keep getting confused. So don't they need like two parts to yes, attach? That's, that's, that's so how shell. do you, how do you, do you need those two pieces for them to, oysters to on the, half shell. the babies actually, and you can see on here where they were smaller oysters starting oh. to grow off that. So um, they're kind of a, a semi hard state mm -hmm. when they are in the larva state. They go on to there, and then they'll start growing off of there. And they'll grow their two sides of the shell. Oh, okay. This is just kind of an anchor. Oh, like I see. Shell. Oh, so they're not actually sort of, it's not like a little piece of they fish coming in. and it's right, like that's what I was, it's, it's not like. They're another oyster's home. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, they're right. just yeah. using the They need shell something to rivet to it. that they okay. attach to. Huh. And, um, it's an ideal situation for them to attach and live. And yep. Grow. And and now, this isn't the only place in the United States where oysters grow. So do you, I mean, do you work all over the United States or are you just really focused on the Chesapeake? Um, Oyster Recovery Partnership, we are based out of Annapolis, Maryland. We uh, also have some full-time staff over on the Eastern Shore, but uh, we're a pretty small nonprofit and we are expanding and working out of the Annapolis, Chesapeake Bay region. We have uh, this Shell Recycling Alliance that we're talking about right now has um, partners here in DC. In addition to the ocean air, we do Old Ebbet uh, Grill. grill and um, sometimes the reef up in uh, Adams Morgan donate their shell when they do oyster festivals. Um, and then we have about a dozen restaurants in Baltimore, about eight in Annapolis, and about a handful in Ocean City as well. That was just started this summer. So um, you clearly want people, whenever they're going out for their seafood, when they want, know they want oysters, to choose a restaurant that, that works yes. with you on this project. How do they know whether or not they're working with you? Do, they, do the restaurants advertise? Yes, we have promotional material that we um, pass on to the restaurant. Um, if they go to the, our website, oysterrecovery.org, <laughs> um, they can uh, find out a lot about the program. Uh, my contact information is on there. Um, and how can, else can people help? Other than coming yeah. to a restaurant that they know is going to recycle the half shells, what else can people do to help you in your efforts? We have uh, volunteers that can help us out since we are a small nonprofit. As much help as we can get, we is greatly appreciated. They can light like, the candles along the like spawn all, areas exactly. when the music's music, going. Like in, all, in all phases of this <laughs> actual the operation, whether it's maybe we're volunteering the hatchery or with you guys personally yeah, like in the office. I'm, I'm the guy on the ground that picks okay. up Shell two days a week. Uh, one day in Baltimore and then another day in Annapolis in DC and I have a volunteer each day that drives around with me and helps collect shell. And this takes this takes time actually. What more more than anything else you, it, it takes time because in order for this to be ready you need at least a year mm -hmm. of, of you know nurturing and feeding it you know, and aging it. So basically time is what you need versus other charities where you know you need all this just massive amount of Yes. Money. And this is a very limited and actual resource. So um, you're asking about what other states are doing. I was researching what other coastal states are doing with their oyster populations, and um, I believe it's North Carolina that has made it a law that you can't throw huh. shell in the trash or in a dumpster. Well, you know, it seems very glamorous to come and, and eat your oysters, but, you know, the whole act of, of keeping it a sustainable population is, is a lot of hard work. And, uh, Part of the recycling. And we appreciate your hard work, as always, and, uh, and we appreciate you learning from this episode, and we hope you'll come back and see who we're dishing with right here next time. Thank you, guys.